Coming up today on Locked On Texas Tech, a new addition for Grant McCaslin and Tech Hoops, and he's a conference freshman of the year. We're also getting to Joey McGuire talking dudes and Tim DeRuder talking about getting those dudes to believe they can compete for a Big 12 title next on Locked On Texas Tech. You are Locked On Texas Tech, your daily podcast on the Texas Tech Red Raiders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're going to start this thing off right. Everything runs through love. Thanks for joining us today on Locked On Texas Tech on the Locked On Podcast Network. Thanks for making us your first listen every day on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts. He's the only Chris Level. I'm Casey Cowan. And always great to be kicking off an episode, Chris, with good news. This time around, it's good news for the Texas Tech men's basketball program as uh, we have an addition here you and I have touched on. The last, I don't know, eight to ten days or so, um, some names as far as guys who are going to be on campus. There was a, a Grand Canyon uh, transfer on campus, a Nevada transfer on campus recently, and now we learn that the Nevada transfer is going to be a Red Raider. Darian Williams, Mountain West Conference Freshman of the Year, has made the call for Texas Tech. Correct me if I'm wrong, Chris, but I believe he's going to arrive with three years to play, six foot six, rangy guy there on the wing who was pretty versatile, at least in one year of college basketball so far. But uh, seems like whether you're a Red Raider or just some basketball college basketball observers out there, uh, this is being praised and, and hailed as a really good thing for Coach McCaslin and Texas Tech to bring a guy like this into the program. Yeah, I, I think uh, obviously with the news of, of Jalen Tyson entering the portal, again, you're, you're just trying to figure out who's going to be on this team. And it's nice, uh, you're right, to, to get some news about somebody that that uh, from the outside in will, will join it. And, and Williams was, was well thought of in the Mountain West Conference. Obviously, you mentioned uh, freshman of the year. <clears throat> I don't think he's somebody that you know, don't misunderstand what you've added here. You, you've added just a good, solid player, okay, a rotation guy. This isn't an all-conference guy yet. This isn't somebody that's going to lead you in scoring, but he's a dirty work guy. He kind of fills up the stat sheet, and, you know, he's a – I think people uh, that, that know him would suggest to, to you that he's a winner. You know, he just – he does those dirty work kinds of things, and – you know, he takes care of the basketball uh, when he's got it. He doesn't shoot it a ton. I think he can score. Uh, he certainly can rebound. Um, and and I just – this is just one of those kind of – you know, I'm trying to think of, of a good comparison. You know, b- back in the day uh, under Bob Knight, there was a guy that, that played named Kasib Powell. Now, I think he actually had the ball in his hands a lot. I don't think Darian Williams will – will be asked to handle the ball a ton, but it was just, you know, you just kind of look at it. And it's like, man, he, he kind of is close to the top of, of most stat categories on the team. Um, you know, and, and he's not, you know, Adonis arms kind of did that for you a couple of years ago. Although Adonis arms was a freak athlete. That's not what we're talking about here. Make no mistake. <laughs> um, but again, he, he's somebody that you, that, you know, is again, I think going to do those things that Grant wants as far as defense and, <clears throat> And can, can score, can rebound, and, and can, he's got some some length to him at about uh, what six six, uh, yeah. you know, about two ten, two fifteen. So, yeah, a nice ad. And and then I I wouldn't be surprised if Chance McMillan from Grand Canyon is is also a part of this. I think he's already finished up his visit. He's headed back uh, to 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 wherever um, wherever he would uh, wherever he came from. Um, and I don't know if their schools in session or Grand Canyon, if, if you know, right at, I think they're right outside the Phoenix area. So anyway, um, but yeah, it's nice to get some good news there about somebody that's uh, joining uh, your your roster. Yeah, and the the way that you uh, describe Williams there at the beginning is intriguing to me and exciting because. I, he may have the potential to develop into a score. Uh, who knows what his future will hold? He comes here as about an eight, eight, and three guy as far as scoring, rebounding, and assisting for Nevada a season ago as far as those averages go. Um, but if you're telling me a dude is starting out as a dirty work guy, like he's already willing to do that stuff, 
come on down, buddy. We'll figure <laughs> out how to get buckets. Because uh, he looks like he does have a little touch and can shoot. I think he was around 36 37% yes. uh, as a freshman. So who knows what, what that future is going to hold. Maybe he develops into that, Chris. But if he's someone – uh, that is already a, a bigger picture guy, team first guy, do what is asked of me guy. Uh, obviously, you can work with those kinds of guys. And don't take my word for it. Was uh, interested to hear these comments from now his former head coach, uh, Steve Alford. This was in early March after a game where Coach Alford uh, was asked about Darian Williams. And it was a conversation about should he or shouldn't he be freshman of the year for some further insight on the new Red Raider. Uh, here's his former head coach, Steve Alford. Talking about somebody that's been f- performing at a really high level. He's, I think he's first in freshman and uh, rebounding. Um, he's probably up there in three-point percentage. He's second maybe in scoring uh, on a team that we're not asking him to be our leading scorer. Um, but he's our leading rebounder. So he's a leading, not only leading freshman rebounder in the uh, Mountain West, he's our leading rebounder um, on a team that um, – is fighting for something. So it, there's no question in my mind that he's um, very, very deserving and should be uh, freshman of the year in this league. Boy, I tell you what, life comes full circle, man. It's weird listening to Steve <laughs> Alford talk about a player that's going to end up at Texas Tech because Steve Alford, uh, I think, you know, had he gotten this job and he was interested in it, uh, maybe Darian Williams would would still have been here. Uh, I mean, you know, I don't, yeah. I don't know, but – uh worlds colliding right there you know <laughs> um but but it, it, it i just I, I think there's something because i mean s- seven plus rebounds a game is is legit now does that translate from the mountain west to the big 12 right. that, that's the tell and and that it, it's a different deal it just is and and i i don't look the mountain west uh, should puff their chest out with San Diego State doing what they did and, and all those things, but just night in and night out, I just think you know we'll, we'll see kind of what what we get. But um, you know, I, I I think though the the three assists is as is impressive to me, uh, and and like less than one turnover. So yes. his three to one assist to turnover ratio is also impressive. But again, the the, the game will be different. The the skill will be different. The coaching is different. The depth is different. The age is different because he's still going to be considered. I mean, this is <clears throat> this is Robert. J- I mean, so so basically, you 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 have you're going to have the 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 three for sure answers we've got at least right now is Robert Jennings, Pop Isaacs, and then uh, Darian Williams. They're all going to be sophomores, so it's still fairly young on paper, depending True. on what else what else you get. So. But this eight. is uh, Chris. Doesn't he kind of resemble six six longer dude on the wing? I mean, some of what we uh, hell we were just talking about it yesterday. Like, uh, and we talked about it with Pop Pop Isaac's return. You know, some of just the the undersized approach that you went with yes. season ago. Th- this does remind me of some of those guys from some of those teams that were really versatile. And I don't know if we'll call them positionless, but uh, somebody that could do a lot of different things. Well, and, and it allows you to do do some different things, especially on defense. Yeah, yeah. and I, yeah. I think uh, yeah, you need to. I'd love to be, you know, f- have a roster full of of length and 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 like that kind of you know interchangeable parts like that. That's why, right? You know, because I see Tyler Perry, uh, his the, uh, the the player of the year in Conference USA that played for Coach McCaslin. He's kind of trimmed his list to four schools, and yeah. Texas Tech is one of those, and I, I again, I could be wrong, I, but I just, I just wonder if if this is a, a makes sense or if it's is a fit, you know, based on what you want to do uh, defensively, based on you know him being five nine, five ten, five eleven in that range. I will say that I will say this though, when you hear Darian Williams talked about, they say winner, like willing to do whatever it takes, not worried about this or that. Um, I would be shocked if if Grant McCaslin didn't just refer to, you know, Tyler Perry as winner, and and how much is that worth to you? How much is that kind of culture or that do whatever it takes guy? And can you you know, can you overlook you know and 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 be willing to deal with him being vertically challenged? You know, and again, <laughs> he can play, man. I mean, don't don't mistake well, what I'm Chris, saying. You'd rather have a 
a vertically challenged effort guy than an effort challenged tall guy. Yeah, no, no doubt. And I mean, I don't mean effort. I kind of mean effort, but what you're talking about, just the all around, it's going to be a great teammate, great locker presence, you know, guy that's going to yeah. be a good vibes guy. I think you called someone <laughs> not yeah. too long ago. Was that just me? I've wanted to be called that since then. If it wasn't <laughs> me, uh, either way, I'm excited about the, uh, Darian Williams addition, 30 starts, uh, last year for Nevada. So, he was being counted on and was being impactful, as we said, around 36 37% beyond the arc. I think he was an 80% plus free throw shooter as well. So the building blocks, encouraging uh, for maybe what this guy can become, hopefully in a Red Raider uniform. But <laughs> that's the world of college basketball. You never know for how long you get to see a guy in your uniform. So we'll take him while we got him, and uh, apparently we'll have him next time around. Let's stick with transfers. Uh, but we're going to make a hard left over to Joey McGuire and the gang. Coach McGuire and company this week preparing for the spring game coming up this weekend. Coach McGuire was asked this week also about spring additions, transfer portal considerations, things like that. The answer was interesting enough as it relates to just purely will you or won't you, but there may also be something in there that's going to get you juiced early in this week as he rounds out his answer. There will be talk of dudes next on locked on texas tech but first today's episode brought to you by FanDuel, america's number one sports book and the official sports book of locked on got the nba playoffs going on major league baseball tibetan tiddlywinks or anything in between that's on your radar FanDuel has got you covered and right now if you've never done it before you're in luck because it's a great time to be a new customer you can get started with FanDuel right now by Downloading the FanDuel app, safe, secure, easy to use. Woo! First timers, when you get the app, you're going to immediately be eligible for a no sweat first bet. Up to 1000 bucks. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up now. Place your first bet and get up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. So don't miss your chance to get a no sweat first bet. Up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today by downloading the FanDuel app or go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up with FanDuel, an official partner of Major League Baseball. To be with you again on Locked On Texas Tech on the Locked On Podcast Network with Chris, I'm Casey coming at you. From west of the 100th Meridian, where it's really going down. Always great to be with you from the great state. We are talking transfers, but we're talking football this time around. As A moment ago, we were touching on the addition for Grant McCaslin and the Red Raider men's basketball team in the form of Darian Williams, uh, former Mountain West Conference Freshman of the Year. Uh, meanwhile, Joey McGuire and the Red Raider football program preparing for the spring game coming up this weekend from Lowry Field here in the LBK. A little different scene as construction is ongoing at Jones Stadium. Have more on the spring game and what to expect, what to look for as we wrap up the week in a couple of days. But wanted to focus on one thing here with Coach McGuire today, Chris, that I thought was really interesting and just uh, – one of those good old-fashioned spin you into a lather, Joey McGuire answers. Anyway, it started with just a question about spring transfer portal additions. When it opens up, what are you looking at? What are you considering? You know, is there like a, a pressing need list where you know you're going to get busy? Because obviously Texas Tech had some exciting news in the offseason as far as returners and things like that. And it's also some transfer additions that are going to factor in. So, you feel like you got a pretty healthy roster, but I love the way that Coach McGuire just uh, gets, well, a simple-minded man's attention like mine, where by the end of it, you're thinking, huh? Wait, what? What? Do you yeah, okay, brick wall, where is one? I'm ready to stick my nose through it. Uh, here is Coach McGuire on the thought of pursuing additions and how they chop up this process in general. Even with the portal not opening, I look at my roster every single day. I mean, literally, the first thing I do whenever I come in, I sit down and grab a cup of coffee and I open up my spreadsheet. Um, just, you know, uh, really trying to, uh, as far as even the depth chart of trying to create competition, um, I think a lot of that's going to depend on Saturday, um, you know, exactly 
uh, what, if anything, we'll do. Uh, I feel good, man. I feel good. Like if uh, it's one of those deals, our starting eleven um, and have really good depth at receiver, have good depth at running back on defense for sure. Our starting eleven, we have some good depth in some places, and then we're gonna play some really young guys. And so um, we'll sit down after uh, Saturday and, and see. Uh, it's gonna definitely be if it is anything, and I can't think off the top of my head when I say this. It's going to be a need. There's not going to be anybody that pops up that we're like, oh, my gosh, this guy. Because we have some, as uh, Coach Tang said, I saw him after he was playing. We got some dudes. I mean, you know, to win games, you got to have dudes. And we have some dudes. Woo! <laughs> dudes? Dudes in town, Chris? Yeah. I kind of yeah. forgot about the original question when he started talking about how many dudes like the, <laughs> the Red Raiders have on the roster. The theme of 2023 season, put it on a shirt now. We've got dudes. We've um, got dudes. Yeah, you know, I, I, and, and I guess in the last day or so, you have lost one to the portal and, and Eric Gray. Um, I think late, late last week you lost one and Hutt Graham. These are younger players that don't think we're, we're expected to factor in or, or close to it uh, this season or maybe for another year or so. These were guys right now. These were guys. Yeah, you that's right. You become a dude. Yeah, and, and, yeah. and Hutt Graham ends up uh, – tra- you know, he, he's already announced that he's going to transfer to Abilene Christian to play for, for Coach Patterson, who, who was here as the D.C. before. And Good idea. I wouldn't be surprised if Eric Gray did the same thing. I, I don't know, but um, – I, I I think you'll get I think you'll get another announcement or two with somebody uh you know maybe deciding hey man I just don't know if I can work my way in here or or whatever so or maybe maybe next week but I also really wonder from what Joey's talking about there how much room they ultimately have to add folks uh, and again I'm going to maintain. That because look, there was a there was a USC offensive lineman, I think earlier this week, originally from Cedar Hill, that was six six three hundred plus, and everybody kind of started connecting dots and going, okay, here we go. But I I, I will maintain offensive line again, depth or or otherwise, if it makes sense, a tight end maybe. And defensive back, specifically corner help. Th- those are the those are the three. And again, there may be some unknowns there on some other positions, but I, I think those would be three positions that you may attempt to address if it makes sense. And you have a spot, and there's somebody in the portal that you think, okay, th- this would help. Um, so, I mean, because remember last summer <clears throat> they had a a player. Keon Blankenbaker, uh, just uh, off the top of my head there from Wyoming, he came in and he had one year to play. And this was like a late ad in the, in the summertime. And this was just basically DB depth and special teams help. You know, that that's what he was uh, asked to provide. We never really saw him much, but it was a nice little insurance policy. So I just think that as, as guys get in the portal – you, you know, and you start to look at your roster, sometimes, man, it's like it, it, it makes some sense. So we'll just kind of see what plays out over the next week because the window just opened up uh, to get in. Cade Briggs, we knew he was going to leave about a month ago, but he just got in the portal this past, I guess, Saturday because that's when the the portal window opened up for, for you to be able to jump in and it will close. I think it's May the 11th, I think is right. Yeah, so we, we just got into it this week. And I, I don't know, Chris, if you've got anything to compare this to, but I, I just continue to be, as far as like previous head coaches or just coaches you've been around uh, at Texas Tech, I just continue to kind of be taken aback uh, by the boldness in many of Coach McGuire's spring camp comments as it just relates to his team. And I, I don't know why I'm so taken aback. I don't know if it's like, uh, hangover from, you know, the the Mike Leach don't break out the anointing oil kind of approach or the hangover from Cliff Kingsbury, Fort Knox, I say nothing to no one approach uh, that is significant of anything or the Matt Wells, what county am I in approach? I, I don't know why it like catches me so much off guard that, that McGuire is, is uh, he believes in his team. He believes he's got one that compete can compete and we'll get to that a little bit further coming up in just a moment before we're done here uh but he's he ain't bashful about any of it 
And I just don't really remember a coach that's uh, caught my attention so many times with comments like that. You know, going back to the, well, I think this team, they may beat the bowl team by 14. Or I think it was after the first practice. (laughs) No, it's like, well, they got their, (laughs) they got their pads all strapped up correctly. I think they're pretty damn good. (laughs) But he knows. You've noticed this too, right? I mean, this is a little, little different, I guess. He knows. I, I, I think this is part of, uh, again, good vibe guy, right? I think yeah, that you, you, you kind of speak it into existence a little bit. And I think you, I think it, it's, it's, you're taken aback uh, by it because it's so different and not just of what it's been around here, really everywhere. You just don't, you don't see coaches really trying to shout their team's praises because everybody is trying to like, you know, temper enthusiasm and kind of, you know, we, I don't want to, but J- Joey, Joey just goes about life differently, man. And I think he tries to go about coaching a bit differently. He's very 2023 from the standpoint of you got to be a player's coach. You got to instill confidence and don't misunderstand what I'm saying here. If you go over there and watch, he will jump an assistant or, or he will jump a player. He gets right in the middle of them, but th- they're 10 minutes later or the next day, Loving them up, joking around, eating honey buns together, or or flaming hot tacos, <laughs> whatever. I mean that that's the whole thing. And I think he just, again, he coaches them hard and loves them hard. And I just think sometimes it's very one sided, you know, in, in in some of these uh, coaching positions, depending on where you're at, whether at high school, college, or or professional ranks. Um, and it's you know, and, and obviously the pro ranks are very much business-like and 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 coaches sometimes uh, treat it as such but joey is very 2023 i i, I love it and i think it you know again it, it it fires those kids up and they want to play hard for him because uh he believes in them and he's telling them that repeatedly i i could be wrong but i believe the history books would even tell you that uh robert e lee and and u.s grant at appomattox courthouse shared a honey bun to mend those fences i mean honey buns have been bringing americans together after conflict, uh, or maybe just tough love for for millennia. Uh, long live the honey bun. We'll end the conversation with that. Before we end the episode, however, we're going to stick with Texas Tech football. I want to get back for a bigger picture view as we had, uh, I think just a couple of days ago, maybe a day ago, ESPN kick out their first Big 12 2023 FPI rankings. What do they mean? I don't know. Would you believe anything I told you about it? Football power index, funky power index, freaking power index, freaking power index. I don't know. Maybe we'll reveal some of that mystery coming up on the other side. Where are the Red Raiders on the list? And I also want to get back to a comment from defensive coordinator Tim DeRuiter, who we heard from on yesterday's episode, Chris, because where Texas Tech is on this list, probably not a surprise to you, but we'll have them in a spot to compete in the Big 12 Conference for honest to goodness hardware. But how do you get them to believe that they can compete in the Big 12 Conference for honest to goodness hardware? I want to get to an answer from Tim DeRuiter on that thought, and we'll get to the list itself as we wrap her up. Back again for one more next on Locked On Texas Tech. Thanks for making Locked On Texas Tech a part of your day, whenever, wherever, however you're doing it. We appreciate it. Also, a special shout out to those everydayers out there. I'm talking to you. I'm looking at you specifically. We see you there again, and we appreciate it greatly. Become one of those everydayers. Join that special group. Commemorative keychains. Commemorative Frisbees. I think we had someone throw out in the YouTube comments as an idea. Or just some commemorative ink anywhere on your body. That's your choice. Join and become an everydayer, and you've got options like that available to you subscribe on youtube or anywhere you get podcasts so you never miss an episode uh chris wrapping up today's episode taking a look this week at espn's first fpi ranking of 2023 when it comes to the big 12 conference the university of texas is at the top of the list number what? five what, what holds your surprise what, i cannot your, believe they're getting surprise? some preseason credit wow i mean that is <laughs> Shocking to me. I mean, God. If you're not watching on YouTube, folks, he's falling out of his chair. Whoa. (laughs) That floors me. Well, you know, the numbers, the numbers bear it out. The analysis, the in depth film study, Chris, they don't just hand these rankings out to somebody like the. Oh, yes, they do. Yes, they do. Never mind. We're talking about Texas. Oh, and speaking of somebody like that, Oklahoma is second on the list. 
Now, this is within a national scheme. So nationally, this would result in Texas at five, Oklahoma at 11. Next in the Big 12 Conference is Texas Christian, nationally 17th on ESPN's list. Number four in the Big 12 Conference, the good guys, your very own Red Raiders, which would be 22nd nationally on ESPN's big picture list. So Texas, Oklahoma, Texas Christian, Texas Tech, one through four. You got the Baylor Bears there at number five, 23rd nationally. And I'll just stop here because I thought it was interesting that UCF, Central Florida, new Big 12 brethren, sixth on this Big 12 list, number 26 nationally. Check out the rest of it for yourself online if you're into such things or don't. I wish you well in either endeavor. Chris, you and I know this is coming. You know when we get to actual like rankings that factor into things closer to the season, whatever off-season lists we're going to have here, Big 12 preseason media polls, Blah, freaking blah. <laughs> Texas Tech is going to be highly thought of, and you're going to be in a position, uh, you would think, to compete in the Big 12 Conference for something special, something you have not competed for hardly at all in this league, certainly not for the better part of a decade and a half. And I don't know how you go about instilling, instilling pardon me, that kind of belief in your locker room, because it's going to take – literal belief to do something that you haven't done often or haven't done in a very, very long time. You can be good. You can be talented. But if it's not there between the years, belief, the most dangerous thing, you may not get all you need to uh, out of that talent, out of that experience, out of that whatever. And it comes back to what word? Culture. And before we get further into it, I want to take a listen again to defensive coordinator Tim DeRuiter, who we heard from a couple of days ago, because he talked about this very thing. Instilling a belief that a pursuit of a Big 12 championship is the expectation this year and is also something that clearly is rooted in reality. But how do you convey it to your team? Here's Coach DeRuiter talking about just that. Day one, I think Coach McGuire did a great job of setting expectations. He commended them for going and winning a bowl game against you know, Mississippi State um, you know, before we got here. Mm-hmm. But he said, guys, that is not the standard here. Our, our standard is competing and winning the Big 12. And I think a lot of the guys, when they first heard, especially the guys who'd been here for a little bit, were, were kind of like, okay, Coach, that sounds great, but we've heard it the last three coaches too. And they you know, probably weren't 100% bought into that just yet. But I think beating a Texas, beating an Oklahoma, our guys really believe, hey, if we do what we're capable of doing, I mean, and the only way we can do that is for us to play the best that we can play week in and week out. Our guys practice extremely hard, and you play with energy, and you play hard, and you're willing to get a game in the fourth quarter and play with confidence. Our guys, I mean, we won our overtime games. We found ways to win in the fourth quarter. And I think that's what drives our guys, you know, even in the soft season. We got a ton back on offense. We got a pretty good number back on defense but we think as a whole we're going to be a better football team next year and if we play like it we've got a chance to compete for the big 12 championship that that's the i I was going to say i mean zach uh tim and and joey specifically he he will tell you he will absolutely tell you and he means it okay because because don't misunderstand what i'm saying everybody's got a chance okay i mean that that's just the way it, it works if you're in the league, you've got a chance to win the league title. Okay, but skip past that part, the captain obvious part. They have a legit chance, and I think that's what he's – you know, th- these guys firmly believe that. Again, it doesn't mean it's going to be easy. It doesn't mean you should be the favorite or, you know, um, you, you know, and you're going to need certain things to go right. But you, I, they, they know what they've got. Uh, they've all been power five guys. They've all been around the, this league or – or in leagues similar, and, and they know what you have to have. Um, they, they know you've got to stay healthy and be able to win on the road and win the close games and all those things because there's so many close games in, in like football and basketball, which is what we've, we've talked about so much. And it's – here's the difference. In football last year, you won most of those. In basketball last year, you lost most of those. Think about how different it gets, and and there wasn't a lot of, a lot of lopsided much margin 
there in, in some of those wins and losses, but you get a result and you don't get a result. One coach gets an extension and you've got a chance to win a, a Big 12 title the next year and, and the arrow is pointing up. The other one is no longer here and the roster is, is depleted. You're trying to rebuild it because there's a new coach here. And, I, you know, I don't know if you change some of those results in basketball for having different conversations because there was some off the court stuff, too. But you get what I'm saying. Yeah. Winning, winning close ones creates this belief and this culture and, and all those things because it could easily have gone the other way. I mean, think about it. What if you what if you only win one of your three overtime games? You know, what if you yeah, you only, don't go six for eight on fourth down against Texas? Against Texas, fourth but, and twenty against Houston or whatever. Yes, <laughs> yes. But but guess what? You did. You, you did, did, and yeah. nobody can take it away from you. You won four in a row. You won the bowl game. And and you earn that. You kind of earn this this hype or this positivity or however you want to phrase it. So uh, and and I, and I think that uh, that list, uh, Casey, where, where the Red Raiders are, what twenty second in the country, and yeah. I think what would you say fifth in the Big Twelve of number Big four in the Big Twelve, and, uh, yeah. number four. Okay, yeah. And it, and it was help me out. It was it was Texas, Oklahoma, TCU, and then Tech in that order. And yes. I think Kansas State is right behind you, and Central Florida is right behind you, and Baylor. Yeah, okay, and, and Baylor too. I, I think um, I think that the way this formula works for this list to be put together, it's really based on production returning. Hmm. It's based on that. There, there's a formula that goes that goes through it, and and it 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 wants to know how many how many yards and tackles and everything are, are, are returning on your team. And I, I just think that's where Texas Tech really puts a, a, their best foot forward is so much production on either side of the ball coming back. And I think, you know, it doesn't, doesn't hurt when you when you did all the things that we talked about. And you won down the stretch and you won close games. You won the bowl game and all, all those things. But, uh, you know, I, I, I think you'll see more uh, similar lists in, in these coming months and in the summer as it relates to the Red Raiders in the top 25, again, it can go away quickly. And sure. if you don't beat Oregon in the second game of the season or if you don't beat Wyoming in the first game of the season, it will go away. And those games don't necessarily mean anything unless you're talking playoff race because uh, we're sitting here talking about conference championship. But anyway, it's fun to see, it's fun to see all this. And uh, there's definitely some – some positivity and belief around this football program. Yeah. And if you do win those two games, we're going to blow it up, <laughs> blowing up that hype balloon immediately at the end of the fourth quarter against the uh, Oregon Ducks. If you're victors for the first uh, couple go rounds next season, and nobody knows what to expect of, of these new entries, because when you break it down like that, Chris, how you're describing how this list is put together, obviously UCF, Cincinnati, Houston, BYU, whatever they produced last year, is not equal to what was produced by these teams in a Power Five conference. Clearly, that that's that's not going to be comparable. But just for the remainder of the list, after Texas Tech at number four, Baylor, UCF, K State, Oklahoma State, Iowa State, Cincinnati, Houston, West Virginia, BYU, and for all your hard work, Kansas, you're still dead last on the list. Enjoy that this off season. But yeah, you've got these unknowns here coming into the league as far as new entries. And I'm pretty sure instead of feeding all that to the algorithm that you described, yeah, they just put like a, a Longhorn logo into the algorithm at that time. And boom, right there at the top of the list, buddy. Right there at the top <laughs> of the list. Yeah, I'm sure Sark's getting it. He's getting it figured out. <laughs> it looked like they were on their way to that a season ago. There's no question <laughs> in my mind that I'm not laughing. <laughs> I'm not. There's just a lot of dust in the room. I can't get. I got. Yeah, I got to get the vents cleaned or something. We got to get out of here, Chris. I got a lot to get to, and I know you do as well, man. We'll get back to it coming up tomorrow on Locked On Texas Tech. Be with us the rest of the week because we're going to get you primed up for the spring game. We'll hear some thoughts from Joey McGuire as well. We'll get into some format questions, things like that, as we wrap up the spring edition of Texas Tech football coming up this weekend so don't miss an episode subscribe on youtube or anywhere you get podcasts so you're ready when it drops chris thanks for the time as always man we'll see you tomorrow enjoyed it man i uh, really did uh, good times ahead man keep hope alive we'll talk to you next time that's right be right back here for the next edition of locked on texas tech